Hello you guys, Mark here. In this particular training video, I'm going to show you how you can take your HTML table data and convert it into JSON data. Now you might be wondering why in the world would I want to do that? Here's a one case scenario you may want to think about it. For example, let's say you have a table in your MySQL database or somewhere in the database which you are pulling it back via the JSON array and you bring it back and you want to use that data later on rather than making a call to your server again. So for example, if you have around 10,000 people visiting your site and then you don't want to make a call every single time to get that same amount of data again and you know just save it. And obviously you can use cookies to store some of the data, but sometimes cookies in my experience are not the best way to store information and because they are not in a very programmatically speaking fashion so they could be somewhat uh, misleading or mis uh, communicated sometime you get data that you don't want to get a data so to overcome that particular problem the way that i extract data from a server and then save it in my HTML, not HTML, but html table in a JSON so that way I can store it again so that way if my one person for example scenario would be I have my user data which has user information for example their name their email address where they are located and stuff like that and if I were to re uh, run my code to get something else I don't want to keep on going back to my database and extract the same information again and I know I'm going on and on, but you will see the point pretty soon. So what I'll do is rather than me going on and on about it, I'll show you what I mean. So here we go. So what we will do is we will create a little process where we will take the JSON data, save it into a file, and then load it into HTML, not HTML, but HTML. Sorry about that. I don't know why I'm saying HTML. But in any case, so I'm going to go to this particular website. It's called Macaroo. And in here, you can create different kind of fake data, so to speak, and then save it. And then that way you can play around with it. You can have up to a thousand rows or free data, any particular kind that you want. And then what I'll do is, in this case, I will just get this kind of data set in here. So I'll have one field that is called ID, another one called uh, first name, last name, email, gender, IP address. And this is all fake data, guys. So this is not really real. And then uh, i give you a different kind of uh, data type that you can pick from. Hang on, let me just shrink this up so you guys can see the whole thing. So they give you different types of data type you can pick from. But for the sake of this particular tutorial, we will pick JSON. And then if we want to preview it, let me make, make that a little bigger. We can click here. It's going to go in there. And then there is a JSON data, which is all fake and everything. So what I'll do is I will download this and then I'll just go in here, go in here and just call it leave the name file name the way it is. And then click OK. And that's that. And now what I'll do is I'll go to this folder where I saved the file as see right here. I already have a file under JS. Uh, my JavaScript uh, file. I'll open this up. So, so let's open up in Sublime. So this is what the current data looks like. So what I'll do is I'll delete my old data. Crap all this out. And now I have one variable in my JavaScript. And also, if I were to do this in a real live example, so to speak, I will uh, write a form where someone, my user, will push a button. It will go to my server via the AJAX call and then bring that data back in the JSON array format. So rather than me creating a Ajax call, I'm just pre-populating this JSON data just for this example. So 
that's that guys and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in here just so you know I'll just say give me 100 rows and then I'll just hit preview and it's gonna give me 100 rows I'm just gonna go and select them all and then copy them and then go back to my data file and then I'm just gonna paste it here and save this so this is just whole bunch of fake data it has ID gender first name last name email and IP address and this will all come in play pretty soon so I'm gonna close this file up so before rather than looking at the code so let me just show you what the actual final project is looks like so here's a little my HTML form which just says get JSON data. So what this is going to do is when I, when I click on this button It's going to go to the data file that I just saved and Then it's going to pull all those JSON array data and bring it in and then it's going to populate it in a H HTML table format and then it will allow me to search through that table and give me the appropriate record ID so Let's just show you how that's done. So I click on get data. And here's all the data. Well, it should have given me more than that. So let's see what happened. Should have given me 100 rows. I guess I didn't save it. So let's refresh this. Click again. There we go. That's more like it. Here it is. 100 rows, 100 stat. So I'm going to go up. And then in here, I will search for, let's say, first name. I'm gonna copy this, put it in here, and then obviously delete all those spaces. And then click on get first name record. And then it's gonna tell me, hey, this Jeremy is in row number five and 70. Now, at first you might be thinking, Mark, what's the point? This is not really useful. But let me explain. So let's say you have this HTML table in the background and you can obviously hide this, change the property to be hidden. And then as you load it, you can say, oh, I want to look all the information for, let's say, Roy. So what I'll do is I'll copy Roy and then I'll paste it in here. I'll delete all that and then get the information. Then I'm going to say, okay, Roy only has one role. So let's see what his last name is and what is his email address and what is his IP address. This is just a figuratively speaking. So you can even have his, uh, let's say where Roy is a student. What was his grade level like yes, um, in the last test? How much did he score? Or if you have a, uh, I'm kind of running out of thoughts here, but hopefully you get the point. Point being, you can get a row of information just like you would if you were to run your queries on uh, SQL or MySQL tables but now you can run your queries based on an HTML table so you can pull any kind of information here so let's say now that you know what the row number is ID in this case is three you can select any part of the row any field of that row and then give it to your user or do whatever you want to do it with and this is really simple to do so let me show you the code behind scenes what's happening so i'm gonna open the bob and this is the first line of code this is obviously just bringing up the jquery library and then i'm using a bootstrap just so it makes it looks nice and pretty and this is the small library that will take your table and convert it into a json format and obviously, guys, you don't have to know any of this and what I'm showing you. You could just download this from the link below or you could just hop on over to my site and then go from there. You can have this in like matter of no time. So there you go. So you just this is where magic happens in this particular file. And then after that, I am opening up the jQuery uh, documentation so it can the DOM will be ready. And then in here, I am using the jQuery load data which is the so let me scroll down for you guys so this is the mock-up of it because this is what it says hey 
the one button that says, hang on, let me break this down a little. The one that says get JSON data. This is, come on. See this button right here says get JSON data is the one right here. And then screen data is where the, the information gets populated. And the button name on this is get JSON. So hopefully you get the point. It's just basically, my, this is just the name of the button. And then underneath it, this information gets populated. So here we go. Let's go up. And then after I some my click on the button, click on the click event, I'm saying, okay, go on and look for the file, JSON data, where I saved it at, and then bring it in and then put it in a nice format where it will be in a JSON uh, format. So first, it's already in the JSON format, then convert it into HTML so I can filter for it later. So this is what's happening here. So it just puts it in a nice HTML table format, and then it's gonna print it out to the screen, and that's that. And then this right here, this line of code, that will make everything JSON array for you. So, and then once it's converted into this variable, so we have all the data in JSON array, and then I'm typing it, I am filtering it through, and then I say, hey, if the whatever value that I wanna look up in this case is this, so let me go back in here. So this is the, the input box, and whatever I'm typing in here, this is what's gonna look up, and it says, hey, if this value matches up in the HTML table, get me the ID. So which is this right here? So it just prints out the value. If you guys have worked with JSON arrays before, you already know how this goes. And then this just removes the old value. For example, if I were to look up at more than one person, at a time, it's going to remove the old one and then show me the new one. And then that's that. So let's try this one more time. So I'm going to refresh the page, click on get data, and then I'll just pick like a random name here, say David. Go up here, click here. Get data is going to tell me it's in row 45. So let's just so verify it to make sure it is in row 45. And then there you go. It's in row 45 and I can get all this row information presented to me available and I can do whatever I want to do with it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. And then once again, like I said, if you want to download this HTML table to JSON data, you could just click the link below and then there you have it. Thanks for watching.